For 18 years, the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, which is the uh, parent project of the Disclosure Project, has been taking teams uh, to train them to make contact to these, with these visitors. And we have uh, had multiple events happen where craft have appeared in the sky, hovered in the field, sent electromagnetic signals through our uh, recording devices. We have five hours of electronic signals that we recorded just this past November at Joshua Tree National Park during a major contact event witnessed by 40 people. We know they're here. The question is, why aren't we responding appropriately? I'm a trauma doctor, emergency doctor, seen all this. And when, I, when, I, when you contemplate what's at stake here, um, you don't really give up on that. This is not, this is the pearl of great price. You don't throw this one back into the ocean. And so I get very frustrated sometimes. Um, I've had uh, people I've worked with assassinated, helping us get this far, I'll say that. Um, but you don't give up. And uh, there was a CIA operative who was very supportive of what we were doing, that back in the 90s, during some of the darkest days, after my closest friend, Sherry Adamack, was murdered by these people who were trying to keep this secret, that I wanted to give up. And I was very, very sad and very angry and also very depressed. And I was sent this card that was like a poster, two by three feet. And it had thousands of thousands of never, 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 never on it. And at the end, give up. And so I think of that is that you just can't give up. This is too big of an issue to just sort of walk away from. And there's really no sacrifice too large to get the truth out about something like this. And so, yes, I get frustrated. I get angry. There's been a lot of pain associated with it. And I'm very passionate about this. But... Uh, there's no force on this planet that'll keep me from speaking the truth. They'll have to carry me out feet, feet first in a coffin before I'll shut up about the truth here. And we have over 500 military, intelligence, and corporate people that have come forward to give us information and to take out of the national security vaults some of these documents that are in this briefing for President Obama that's going to be shown to the world on this program for the first time. The lunar module that took Neil Armstrong onto the surface of the moon, uh, my uncle was the sen senior project engineer over that. So I knew about these things since I was eight or nine years old. The people on my team are people who have just positive proof and evidence that this is real. And this is why they're involved. It isn't like uh, we're speculating here. Uh, if there's support for this, uh, take people out to uh, the desert and set up contact protocols and see what happens. It's about new energy and the transformation of our civilization from one that right now is headed over a cliff and needs to be brought back up Phoenix-like uh, from the ashes. We had put together a uh, special presidential briefing uh, for uh, Barack Obama and it has within it a lot of classified documents and information and what we really want to do with this is create a groundswell so that the uh, public supports having the president uh, disclose this information to the extent that he can, but more importantly, provide protection to the people we have identified who can build these new energy technologies to bring us off of oil and gas and coal. We have their information and they want to cooperate. As the president hears from the people, he will then be uh, move to do an executive order to protect these sources inside the intelligence community who want this information out as much as I do, and but who are now being prevented by this majestic group, the group that runs the covert projects, dealing with UFOs, alien reproduction vehicles, and new energy devices, uh, technologies. The bottom line is every cubic centimeter of space, not outer space, but the space right here has enough energy to run the Earth for one day, every, every cubic centimeter of space. So there's an infinite amount of energy within the fabric of space-time. This has been known since the time of Tesla. And here we are still, 100 years into uh, the automobile, uh, over 100 years into coal-fired power plants, and we're still using that paradigm. And that's why we're melting the, the polar ice caps. That's why we have 80% of the world in poverty. 
That's why half the world lives on a couple dollars a day in unspeakable uh, uh, depri deprivation. And the only way that's going to change isn't through the zero-sum game of fossil fuels or, I hate to say it, solar and wind, because it's too expensive. You know why I know this? Because I'm a medical doctor and I cannot afford to turn my house into a solar or wind property. It would cost $200,000. The average American isn't going to spend that and the village in China certainly isn't. This is an existential threat to the human race because you have people who would like to see us get into a conflict in space and who want to weaponize space, taking over something that should have always been the domain of our diplomats, our wise elders. In the course of this program, we will take this entire briefing document and go case by case and expand it and bring the most amazing top secret witnesses as well as documents to bear uh, on this. I met with Senator Claiborne Pell when he was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And he told me he was interested in this stuff, but he was denied access to it. And he asked me to do a briefing for him. So I did. I then was told by the Director of Central Intelligence, James Woolsey, President Clinton's first CIA director, that he was denied access to this information, even though he knew the subject was real. I, mean, I was the guy who put together the briefing for Clinton through the Rockefeller Initiative. Uh, that was my initiative. It was called Project Starlight. It had a code name. You can get the documents have just been released from the Clinton Library. Hey, that's what we were hearing about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's what, but the problem is no one understood what really happened there. What really happened is that Clinton's people were threatened when they tried to look into this. Okay. And Clinton then sent his one of his good friends to my home and said, well, if the president does what you're recommending, he'll end up like Jack Kennedy. Now, this is in 1994, after I briefed a CIA director. You know, I was the guy who briefed Clinton's first CIA director on oh this subject. God. I was the guy. So, what happened at that point is that, of course, my kids heard this. Thought, my God, Dad, are you, is this dangerous? I said, no, no don't worry. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. But the bottom line is, we know that this is this is the big problem. Is that the you know the president of the United States was basically being told, go away, and if you, if you push into this, we're going to take you out. I, mean, I can say this with authority because I'm the only person living who can go on camera and say, I have personally briefed a sitting CIA director who was denied access, a sitting J2, head of intelligence joint staff, the guy who was the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, the largest intelligence gathering entity in the Pentagon, was personally denied access to these things. General Patrick Hughes. I was the guy who briefed him on all this. So you know, when you put that together, what you realize is that this is run amok. This is secrecy run amok, which is Eisenhower's warning to us. I mean, he was right. The old man was right. They have put weapons in space targeting these extraterrestrial vehicles. This we can prove, the weaponization of space is a huge problem because these weapons, the really advanced ones, are electromagnetic weapons that target these extraterrestrial vehicles and hit them and have knocked them down. We have people who have been on the retrieval teams. Now, like Clifford Stone, was he on one Yeah, but there are, we have a whole bunch of folks who've been on them. Now the question is, why are we doing this? Because there's a group of folks who would like to precipitate an interplanetary crisis so that they could amass more power in the world and have the whole world fund this sort of militaristic approach. And in fact, Douglas MacArthur, it's in the congressional record, said in his last address to the nation, when he was in the well of the Congress, and he said, World War III will be interplanetary.